Greetings, people. Today is March 4th, 2014, and this is The Can Kill Show, episode 172. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and this is a show where we learn to be better artists, one of many on YouTube. But today we are focusing specifically on the entire process that is going into my new piece of marketing art for Blizzard Entertainment and the upcoming release of Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls. That's me, reaping. That looks more like I'm a mule, like, harvesting minerals off the uh, mineral line. But we are jumping into where we left off yesterday with our good old-fashioned time lapse. So let's get into that. And I will basically mumble along and try to explain what is happening throughout this entire thing uh, as we go. So we left off yesterday with our good friend uh, Goatman getting kicked in the stomach while all he was trying to do was play the drums and buff his allies in battle. And apparently our monk male over here did not take too kindly to that, and he decided to end his drumming spree. So we open up today with just me kind of making some slight adjustments, and what we're going to be focusing on today, and what I'm going to be explaining, is adding in the rest of the background monsters, the background goatmen, and the background demons. And just kind of my, my general ideas with going into that. You can see me basically getting started here. And what I want you guys to pay attention to is just how loose and just kind of, like, look at all these lines that I'm just starting with. What I'm looking for is flow here. I'm looking for shapes and I'm looking for flow more than anything. Okay, so I drew this thing and I was like, okay, I dig that. I'm feeling that. Something in there is working. So I just kind of begin expanding upon that. And uh, one of the things that I want to let you guys know, um, the first thing that I kind of want to talk about is... Just the importance of the importance of simplification of your background. Like if you're drawing like this big battle of like all these guys, right? Like these freaking demons, and then these guys in the middle, and this guy getting kicked up into the air, and then there's all these like swords and spears like flying through the air, like being waved around, some like battle standard or something like that. You really want to try to only detail a couple of things. And then, I'm sure you've noticed this before, but as things go further into the background, they get more obstructed by atmosphere and dust and all that stuff. And they very quickly start to become silhouettes, just shapes. And so a basic rule that I go by is I like to detail a few characters up front, maybe two or three. And then all I do is I just kind of expand upon that by placing shapes and silhouettes behind them. And it looks like this huge battle. It looks like this massive army, just like an endless army closing in upon our monk friends. When actually it's just three guys and then a bunch of shapes in the background. But your mind, the human mind, fills it in for you. So what I'm trying to do over here is, I don't know if it's very clear, but uh, I'm trying to... I figure, okay, so this guy's freaking kicking this goat man, right? And I want the monk girl to be doing something too, right? But right now she's just kind of like standing there in her little, little I'm ready to fight pose. And it looks kind of like, I don't know, like cheesy or it looks out of place. So I wanted her to be doing something. So I figured, hey, what would be really cool is to, uh, one thing I was playing around with is maybe her eyes need to be looking a different way. Because, I don't know, it, it just looked like she was staring off blankly into the distance and then these things were coming from behind her. And eventually what I end up doing to fix this is uh, the monks have a blinding ability in the game. And I decided, hey, that would be cool if she was like doing this and then her entire body is kind of like kind of glowing from behind her. She's kind of doing like some Super Saiyan thing with her hair and her eyes are glowing. And then the demons that are behind her, they're like being blinded by it. They're like, oh gosh. And like some of them are really close and they're like getting disintegrated basically by the beam of light or whatever is surrounding her. The aura. So that's what I'm drawing over here with this guy. Uh, basically his arm just shielding his face. And um, yeah, still working really, really loosely. And just trying to, to feel out the situation. Trying to feel out the situation, trying to get that flow. Trying to just get that general feel of it. And these muscles, like I'm so bad at the muscles on the side of the, the chest there. Like the serratus anterior, the rib cage and all that stuff. But uh, I feel like I'm getting better at it. I really like to simplify things. I like to just think about, I don't know, muscles are a whole other tutorial in general, but uh, usually I can end up making them look pretty good uh, and kind of at a simplified, kind of in a simplified way. And I really like that. And going back to what I was talking about with simplification of the background characters, um, this, sort of, this sort of thing 
this, you can basically see me falling into this trap right here. Look at how much time I'm spending on this guy right here. I'm spending so much time on this little background demon. When really, I shouldn't be spending that much time or worrying so much about it. Because while I was drawing this, I was like, oh no, is this going to work? Oh, it looks, oh, that pose looks stupid. Or his legs look weird. Or do they have belts like that? Would he wear something like this? You know, is he fashionable enough to wear a belt like that? But, um... Very quickly, uh, I took a break, which is one of the most important things that I've told you guys about in the previous episodes. Uh, taking breaks is essential in my process. And the reason why it is, is because it allows me to take a step back from my work and say, okay, what am I trying to accomplish specifically by placing these characters in the background? Is it to have a lot of detail on them? No, because when I actually go in and color these, I'm going to be making, like their colors are going to be very low contrast. They're going to be framing the piece and complementing it, as opposed to having a lot of detail and high contrast and drawing your eye to the corner of the page, which I don't want you to be looking at. I want all of your attention to be basically pulled in so you see our monk friends right here. And then as your eyes wander, you're like, oh wow, look at all these things that they're fighting. And then you start to enjoy the details of the surrounding areas, but then it brings you right back into the middle of the, the picture. And I'm going to be doing that with the colors. And so I'm putting all this detail into something and worrying about something that really doesn't matter that much. So I end up, uh, I end up just saying, okay, I'm going to take a break from that. And uh, right here, actually, you can see that change that I did. I was messing around with her eyes just a little bit more. I took a break, and during that break, like literally, I, I set my timer for 26 minutes. As soon as that goes off, I'll be like, okay, I guess I gotta take a break now. I'll stand up, I'll start walking away, right? And then literally like 10 seconds later, I'll get the idea. I'll get the idea of whatever it is I'm trying to, to, to fix, right? Because this is basically what I came up with when I walked away. Okay, she's doing this blinding light thing, but she still doesn't look like she's doing, it doesn't look like it's coming from her. So I took that break, came back, and now look, I was like, oh, all I gotta do is I just gotta have like some wind going through her hair, make her eyes glow, and now it looks like there's energy, there's there's something inside of her, right? And now she is, you know, like expanding this this beam of light, blinding all the demons around her. And again, might seem like a simple solution, but you know, I I could already feel myself getting like frustrated as I continued on. Like if I go over my like if I do not take breaks, I will start to get frustrated. I'll start to get stressed out. And the good ideas that I need to solve the problems within my piece will never come to me. Or they might, you know, maybe like a like kind of a, a half solution will come in later, you know. But it's really, it just saves time. It saves time to just step away and, and think about it for a second. Like, what am I truly trying to accomplish with this piece? And then it also just kind of puts things into perspective. Because it's like, well, these, these goat guys right over here, watch as I draw these goat guys. It's like, okay, yeah, I could spend a lot of time drawing in these muscles, but really all I have to worry about is the rim light because he's going to be very heavily silhouetted by the light behind him, and he's basically just going to become, again, a shape. He's a framing object or a framing, I don't know, he's, he's just being used to frame the picture and lead your eye back into it because where the goat man looks, you look also because we are goat men on the inside and we are trained to look where the other goat men look. So, um, here's where I start going into drawing the background. I want you guys to pay attention to how I start doing this. Working with values, working with shapes, not drawing, you know, an exact goat man. Just kind of, you know, figuring out shapes, drawing in the quick little arm, seeing if that works well, looking for flow. And, uh, yeah, continuing along with that. I know I wanted this guy to be kind of looking up. He's like, <gasps> you know, his buddy's like getting kicked over his head. So naturally he'd be like, <gasps> right? One of the things that I hate, Oh, one of the things that bugs me so much in pieces is when there's like this huge battle scene and there's all this stuff happening, but the characters all seem kind of like they're just placed in there. It seems a little bit too contrived maybe. Like basically what it comes down to is that the characters that are the, the characters that are in the piece are not reacting to what's happening within the piece. Like this guy's this guy is freaking getting his buddy kicked right over the top of his head. You think you would notice that and like at least like look up a little bit, or you think you'd like still be staring, just like angry and teeth gritted with an axe, right? He's like like not even phased by what's happening. You know, no, this guy's gonna be looking up. He's like, whoa, you know, maybe I should uh, turn around and uh, go the other way or something like that. So he's actually kind of looks looking scared. This guy, I, I this is the only guy that I think I want to make some changes to.
But we'll get more into that in just a moment, and I will tell you the reason why. But anyway, yeah, so make sure that, again, um, making sure that your characters are all of, the, all of the subjects within your piece, they're reacting to whatever is happening. Like, obviously, these guys are being blinded by the light of this girl. And one of the reasons why I was talking about possibly going in and changing this guy is because this guy, this demon over here is being blinded by the light that she's putting out. However, this goat guy is fairly close to that, you know? If this guy is getting blinded to the point where he has to put his arm over his face and he's getting disintegrated, I think I might want to move this guy back. Maybe, maybe just take him out entirely and maybe put him over here or something. Or maybe have him, like, reacting to it in some way. Uh, if it suits the picture. Sometimes you have to make little compromises here and there. Maybe it won't make complete sense, but, you know, it's all about what looks good in the end. And to me, what looks good is having characters react to what the heroes are doing. So! And I'm really, really enjoying this so far. Like, I'm really, really liking this a lot. So, again, look. I'm just drawing this guy, and I'm drawing this guy. Like, I was imagining his head to look like it was about to explode or something. Like, light is coming out of his eyes, and he's like, ah! You know, like, whatever, doing his, his thing, getting purified. That's what he's doing. He's, being, he's becoming one with the light. The demon is seeing the light, and because of that, his head will now explode. Um, yeah, but I ended up just scrapping that, because I was like, okay, well, I already got enough detail on this guy. Let's just go straight into silhouettes and shapes and complementary type things, right? And then eventually, see, this guy is now also kind of shielding his face. Um, but it's very, it's very rough, you know? It's really just kind of up for interpretation. You might not even be able to see exactly what that is, but... Rest assured, it is another demon shielding his face. And give that guy a little bit of hair. And see, what I want you guys to pay attention to specifically is this huge amount of negative space and why that is important to be there. Because originally I was thinking, oh yeah, I'll have all these, these demons kind of like crouch down, like trying to sneak up on her, right? But having that complete kind of empty white space gives the piece some really some much needed breathing room because you look here like there's like detail happening all throughout this character detail happening all throughout these characters right like you need areas of rest especially along the silhouette lines to make sure that your character is still going to be clear otherwise you're just gonna have this weird jumbled mess and the last thing that you want is for somebody to look at your picture and be like hmm well I think I see what's going on here uh, obviously that I think that's a foot and there's an eyeball, and oh, I can see it's two people hugging because they've just been reunited after 10 years of being away from each other, and they love each other very much. But you don't want that to take that long. You want to be able to literally look at your picture and instantly know what's happening within the first second, within the first half a second. It is subliminally, like you must subliminally uh, translate or, what's the word? Communicate. Communicate your message very quickly. And the way that you do that is by clear silhouettes, making sure to use that negative space properly, properly, and having good um, a good mix and a balance between detail and rest. And that that's a design thing that goes into a lot of just, just good designs. All good designs have great areas of high detail and areas where your eye can rest. It's just it's so pleasing for for us to see that variety. All righty people. So, let's go ahead and just take a look at just those layers. Let's take a look at just those layers so you guys can see exactly what I was doing. I was working on those layers all on their own. Okay? So let's take away Goatman. Actually, we'll leave Goatman uh, for now. But see, look at this. See, you got this guy over here, right? Getting blinded by the light. This guy, too. And see, there's just like some shapes and stuff in there. That's really all it is. It's like, okay, maybe that's a sword, maybe that's like a stick or something, I don't know, whatever it is. That thing, it's, yeah, it's a spear, right? Can't you tell? A lot of these things are just shapes. I, I really think that it, it just looks good to put, like, shapes of, like, spears and sticks up in the air whenever you're drawing a big battle scene. It just looks, it just makes it look really cool. I always do it. <laughs> it's, it's a rule of thumb. Just put sticks whenever there's a big battle going on. Just, yeah. Can never have too much sticks. I have to draw this other guy's drumstick, speaking of sticks. Um, but yeah, look, you can see here's our goat men. And let me take away our foreground goat. See, there's just like, there's so much like artifacts and stuff of me just like moving stuff around. I'm literally just like lassoing 
painting, erasing. This is me just trying to almost like pull the face out of it, or pull the shapes out of it. Really, really heavy line sculpting type stuff. And yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. I really hope that me showing you the actual layers really helps out a lot. Um, let's take a look at just the foreground goat guy. Um, there we go. There's, there's just foreground goat man. And yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with him. I'm not sure if I like him or if I want to change, like move him, take him away, make him reacting to the girl doing the blinding light. I'll have to figure something out. And I will! But whatever serves the picture. Whatever serves the picture makes it look good. As long as, as, long as most of our characters are... There's the old monk girl. Can you see how, how important it is? Like, See just the difference between this and this, right? All I did was I just whited out the eyes and put a couple of little extra hair things flying around. And now it looks so much more energetic and awesome. It looks like she's really doing something. Whereas before, it was just like, just like, hey, like posing for a picture. And that wasn't ideal. All right, people. Well, ah, I am a happy man. I'm a very happy man. Because, hey, let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little story. We, we got a lot of good stuff done today. I went out and I got my business cards all done for the upcoming Wizard World Comic Con in Sacramento, which is this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you live in Sacramento and want to come out and see me, do so. But while we were out running some errands, Colton and I, we went over to his house and we were running through his basement. And you will not guess what we found down there. We found an actual working Super Nintendo. And not just that. We found Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2, Earthworm Jim 1 and 2. What else do we have? Um, Yoshi's Island. Oh, I freaking love Yoshi's Island. And we got all these awesome games for a working Super Nintendo. And it is sitting out there awaiting my arrival, along with a cream soda. So I'm going to go enjoy that. Thank you guys for joining me on YouTube. Uh, this has been part six of From Beginning to End, Diablo 3 Marketing Art. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys tomorrow as we will be working on Malfail, the background element. I'm doing all kinds of fun things with that. So you guys take care, and I'll see you then.